Welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by MPB. And it is December, the month of the solstice, so the longest night of the year for the Northern Hemisphere, and the shortest night of the year for the Southern Hemisphere. And it's also the last month of 2022, so make sure you have your 2023 What's in the Night Sky calendar ready to go. Please buy a calendar. I've printed way too many this year. But coming up this month, we have the Geminid Meteor Shower, which is one of the best meteor showers of the year. We also have the Ursid Meteor Shower. Mars is in opposition, meaning it's shining its brightest for the year. There's also a lunar occultation of Mars, where the moon will block Mars from view for about an hour. And at the end of the month, there's a conjunction between Venus and Mercury. So there's lots to look forward to. But let's start with the deep dive into the Northern Hemisphere night sky. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere with the nights are long and dark. And as darkness falls, you'll find the Great Rift region of the Milky Way standing almost vertically in the Western horizon. You also notice Saturn and Jupiter following the Milky Way into the West. And they will both eventually set before midnight. Facing north as darkness falls, you'll notice Ursa Major now starting to rise higher into the northeast, and the minor stars that make up the feet of the bear become visible above the horizon. But of course, the highlight of this time of year are the winter constellations and the asterism, the winter hexagon, otherwise known as the winter circle. This is an asterism made up of bright stars from various constellations. So you have Sirius from Canis Major, Procyon from Canis Minor, Pollux from Gemini, Capella from Auriga, Aldebaran from Taurus, and Rigel from Orion. And they will make up the winter circle or winter hexagon. It's a really beautiful region of the night sky. This month you'll also notice Mars hanging out in that region of the night sky as well. So you've got lots of bright, colorful stars as well as the bright red Mars, which reaches opposition on the 8th of this month. So Mars is shining at its brightest for the year. And this is because it is opposite the sun for us here on Earth. And so it's the closest it is to Earth on its orbit. And so it appears brighter in the night sky. And if you're in Western Europe or the USA, there'll be a lunar occultation of Mars this month where the moon will block Mars from view, but I'll talk more about that in the special events later in this video. But there are so many jewels in this region. You have, of course, Pleiades, the open star cluster, very much visible with the naked eye, even from light polluted areas. Next to that, you have the California Nebula, which shows up really nicely if you've got an astro modified camera. And there's just so many regions of hydrogen alpha emissions. The Rosette Nebula is another very bright region of hydrogen alpha emissions. And of course, the constellation Orion, lots of hydrogen alpha emissions there. But the winter hexagon will spend the late evening rising into the east and then it crosses the southern skies. So it's out all night. And then as we approach sunrise, it sinks down to the southwest and eventually to the western horizon just before sunrise. And if you do want to get up, in the pre-dawn hours, you'll also notice a good opportunity for a winter Milky Way arch panorama. So you've got the winter hexagon down in the southwest and then over to Cassiopeia and Cygnus in the northwest and north. It's also worth mentioning that the Andromeda galaxy starts the night very high and it stays high for most of the night. So really good opportunity to get the star tracker out and get some real nice detail on the Andromeda galaxy. Towards the end of the month, facing southwest just after sunset, you'll find Venus and Mercury very close to one another. And on the 21st is when Mercury reaches greatest eastern elongation, which is its furthest distance from the sun in the sky. And then as the days go by, they get closer and closer. On the 24th, they're joined by an extremely thin crescent moon. It might be a bit easier to spot the moon on the 25th, although it won't be as close to Mercury and Venus. And then they continue to get closer and closer until on the 29th, we have a conjunction between Venus and Mercury in the southwest after sunset, both of which will be very Right, so this is a great opportunity. Onto the Southern Hemisphere, where it will be a lot easier to spot Venus and Mercury. And you will also get the same conjunction and the same meeting with the Moon on the same dates as I just mentioned 
in the Northern Hemisphere. But in the Southern Hemisphere, as darkness falls in the West, you'll see Saturn sinking down to the Western horizon, as well as Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter will set around about local midnight. Facing south, as darkness falls, you'll see the small Magellanic Cloud as well as the large Magellanic Cloud starting the night very high in the sky, so a good time to get the star trackers out. And if I swing over to the east, you'll notice a really good opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama. And what we know as the Winter Hexagon or Winter Circle in the Northern Hemisphere is of course the Southern Summer Hexagon or Southern Summer Circle. And they will rise into the Northeast and cross the Northern Horizon as opposed to the Southern Horizon for us in the Northern Hemisphere. And again, it'll be out pretty much all night long, sinking down into the Northwest and eventually into the West, where again, there will be another opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama facing southwest in the pre-dawn hours. And you've got lots of the amazing parts of the Milky Way that you can only see from the Southern Hemisphere. Before we jump into these special events this month, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, MPB. If you have any gear lying around that you haven't used for a while, head on over to mpb.com by following the link in the description. You can get an instant quote for your gear online. And if you're happy with the quote, MPB will collect the gear from your address at a time of your choosing, and then you get paid pretty swiftly too. So you might want to free up some funds to get some Christmas gifts for your friends or family, like my calendar, for example. <laughs> or if you're in the market for a new lens or camera or tripod, you can check out the huge range of photography and videography gear available on MPB at amazing prices. You get to see images of the actual item that you're going to buy. And furthermore, everything you buy comes with a completely free six month warranty. So whether you're looking to free up some funds by selling some gear that you haven't used for a while, or you want to buy something for yourself on the used market, head on over to mpb.com by following the link in the video description down below. As for the special events this month on December the 7th or the 8th, depending on where you are, there's a lunar occultation of Mars, and this is basically where the moon blocks Mars from view. So if you're in pretty much most of America or Canada, you get to see this event in the evening of the 7th. Or if you're in Western Europe or the UK, you get to see this event in the early hours of the morning on December the 8th. So for us in the UK, Mars will hide behind the moon about 5 a.m., and then reappear on the other side of the moon about an hour later. Now, the path that Mars follows behind the moon and the time that it starts and ends will vary pretty massively depending on where you are. So I strongly advise you download a night sky emulator like Stellarium, and that way you can simulate the event for your exact location, and that will help you plan what time you need to start watching and how long the event is going to last. Then we have the Geminid Meteor Shower, which is normally one of, if not the best, meteor showers of the year. It's active from the start of the month until around the 24th, and the peak is expected around the 14th. So depending on where you are, that might be the night of the 13th into the 14th, or the night of the 14th into the 15th. Now, when there's no moon in the sky and you're in a dark sky location, you can expect about 100 to 150 meteors per hour during the peak. However, this year, there will be a waning gibbous moon in the sky pretty much all night. So that's going to wash away lots of the smaller fainter meteors. But the good news is Gemini meteors tend to be very bright and relatively slow moving in the sky as well. So realistically, with this waning gibbous moon, you can expect 30 to maybe 50 an hour if you're in still a relatively dark sky location, like a countryside or somewhere where there's not much light pollution. The radiant point of the meteor shower is in the constellation Gemini, but remember you don't have to look in the direction of Gemini in order to see meteors. It's just that meteors will fall all over the night sky, and if you follow a path back from all of the meteors, they all point back towards a point in the night sky within the constellation Gemini. You don't need to look in the direction of Gemini. Gemini gets a lot higher in the sky for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. 
If you're in the southern hemisphere, it doesn't get very high above the sky. So you'll only see about 30% of the meteors that we'll see in the northern hemisphere. And for you guys, it's probably advised to look in the direction of Gemini. So facing north, set up your cameras facing, you know, north, east to northwest, somewhere around there to have a better chance of catching some meteors. Then we have the Ursid meteor shower, which is active from around the 17th to the 26th. The peak is expected around the 22nd to the 23rd. The good news is that's timed with a new moon, so there's not going to be any moonlight hindering the faint of meteors. So the viewing conditions are amazing. However, it's only a minor meteor shower which produces about 5 to 10 meteors per hour during the maximum. The radiant point is within the constellation Ursa Minor, so it's very much a northern hemisphere affair. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you might want to try your luck facing north, um, but I really would keep your expectations incredibly low. And that's all I have for you this month, guys. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph and then upload your images to social media using the hashtag Wittens for a chance to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a What's in the Night Sky calendar. And first place wins a copy of my book, Photographing the Night Sky. Last month's theme was the Lunar Eclipse. And without further ado, in third place was Tim Hahn with this beautiful image of the eclipse captured during twilight. Now, most lunar eclipse images are composites because of the extreme difference in the exposure between the moon and everything else, but capturing the event during twilight like this allows you to capture a much more natural representation that's more true to the naked eye. And I love that attention has been made to align some foreground interest and just a really beautiful image. In second place was Eye of Kyle with this composite of the progression of the event from start to finish so as the shadow starts to take over the moon and then turns that gorgeous blood red all the way through to the moon reappearing to full brightness again and in first place i said i was looking for something different and honor B was the only one to produce a moon and star trail of the event and i just love watching the color change as the moon goes into totality Really nice foreground interest, very well composed, and just absolutely loved this image. So congrats to all the winners. This month, let's do a double prize. So I'm going to do two sets of prizes. One set of prizes for either the lunar occultation of Mars or the conjunction of Venus and Mercury. And then another set of prizes for images of the Geminid or Ursid meteor shower. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.